All right, how about now? Oh, hello? Hello? Is it delayed? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do the yes thing again? Yes. 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 Okay, it sounds right. Okay, it sounds <laughs> <good>. <laughs> this is how the professionals do it, ladies and That's gentlemen. That's how we do it. Oh, man. Well, beautiful. Um, I uh, Well, it's a pleasure to have you, if you'd like. I, I have been recording, but I will edit out the parts of this where we've had our technical difficulties. Whatever uh, is best for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say, I usually, it takes about 45 minutes, but if you've got some time restraints, constraints, I can shorten it up to like, to shorter, however long you've got. Just, let's just do it. Let's just bang through it. Let's just bang through. I wish my wife would say the same thing to me. That's okay. <laughs> Amazing. All right. Well, uh, here, let, let me clear the pipe source. Hello, everybody. And welcome to another episode of A Comedy Advice podcast my name is stefan satani and i am your host joining me today a very special guest you've seen him on mean girls hbo's looking or perhaps reciting shit italian moms say he's the host of the yes jesus podcast he's a nationally touring comedian that's coming to phoenix arizona may 20th rupaul taught me how to pronounce his last name everybody welcome daniel franzese yes hello everybody it's good to be here Oh my gosh. And, and have you, uh, we had, it's, it's amazing to be with <laughs> you in your, in your car right now. Actually, we were indeed. Yes. We were taking a stroll together. It was really nice. Uh, I felt like I was in the passenger seat. Well, kind of like crammed in the foot space of the, of the passenger seat, but you know what? It was great. Great. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> Let's talk about you. Very excited to have you come to Phoenix, Arizona. And I wanted to ask, I know that the pandemic has, uh, you know, put a little stop on live comedy shows. It's starting to open back up with all these delicious vaccinations that people are getting. And so I wanted to ask, how has it been um, getting back into live shows? Have you done any live shows? Yeah, I just headlined uh, Miami Improv last month. That was kind of weird, but very great. And... Okay. Uh, I've been doing a lot of virtual stuff, you know, and I've been touring to a few uh, colleges. They do really social distance kind of things. Uh, it's not totally normal yet, but we're out there doing it. Nice, nice. Because before the pandemic, I mean, you had been doing it. You were nationally touring and you had the, yes, that's amazing. You're amazing comedy tour. Yeah. And um, you also, I think Flappers and the Comedy Store, you had monthly regular shows going on. Right. And I was just about to start one at Hollywood Improv, too, when all of this happened. It was like literally like the next week we were going to have our first show. Oh, my gosh. Wow. That's that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So much got canceled because of COVID. I was hosting Perthshire Pride in Scotland. I was... Um, you know, going to be traveling to drag cons around the world, like, mm -hmm. uh, so much, you know, um, and I, I usually make a lot of money in June for pride. And, you know, those are, those are months that the amount of money I make carry me through the rest of the year. You know, it was really a tough mm -hmm. year for live performance. Wow. Yeah. That, that that's gotta be crazy. And, um, yeah, talking to a lot of other comedians too, they were, they were definitely sharing similar stories about how, I mean, that's how a living is made doing doing yeah live some of us i mean points. we have standard gigs i always play you know uh, this area i always play that area like at this time of year and i always host this event and all those events and everything just started drying up oh man oh well we all get our water somewhere hopefully and i feel that there were some good things that came out of the this awful pandemic and i think one of them was did you start your podcast yes jesus during, yeah. during this time we were already planning on it. We had already had production meetings and a, and a schedule and everything like that. But then when COVID hit, we were like, don't let, let's not let this stop us. Let's just do it. And so we nice. ended up doing it for my living room mostly. Oh, excellent. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. and, and wanted to ask too, what was the, the spark or, or the, um, you know, the initial want of having, cause yes, Jesus, it's about, um, you know, integrating, the the uh, lgbtq community with christianity because it's not mutually exclusive and i think a lot of times people might feel that way but um you've kind of brought it together in a fabulous way can you talk a little bit about that 
I think a lot of the times, you know, uh, queer people, when they come out of the closet, uh, have to like, are, are made by society to like make a choice between gay and God. Like if you go in the gay groups, they don't want to hear about God. And if you go in the God groups, they don't want to hear about being gay. So it sort of splits your identity up. And for a lot of us that grew up Christian, that was a huge part of our identity and our yeah. families yeah. And, and the way we love and the way we treat the world. So, you know, to have to leave that behind, it's, and learn a whole new way of living. Sometimes you're not learning the right way of living from the, you know, the right, the, in the right kinds of people when you're shunned from all that, you know? And I just felt like that was always kind of like a bogus thing that like, there wasn't that many people giving the choice between, you know, saying like, oh, God still loves you, you know? And then on top mm -hmm. of that, mm -hmm. um, when Pulse Orlando, the shooting in Pulse Orlando happened, um, I tried online to search for a prayer for the LGBTQ community because I really didn't have a lot of words at that point. I was so devastated over the situation. So I wanted to like post like a meme or a prayer or something that could help me understand what was going on. And there was nothing. There was just nothing online mm. for, uh, that I could find at the time. It just wasn't readily available. So I, I couldn't find one prayer for the LGBTQ community. So I was like, well, you know, we created this show and we have one at the end of every episode now. So it's like, oh, you know, awesome. with different people, like, you know, pep we did an uh, episode about dead names and about trans people choosing new names and, and uh, Peppermint came and, uh, you know, it's the prayer at the end of that episode. And we've, ha we've had other people do prayers, you know, uh, Ginger nice. Min, Jonathan Bennett, and people do prayers on our shows. Just, just to sort of hear it from a whole bunch of people that God is love. That's, that's amazing. And it, it's very close to my heart, too, because out of my four siblings, my, my brother, he, he and I were best friends growing up, and he ended up um, coming out. And it was a real struggle for him with that, too, because my family was very, very Catholic. And so, okay. um, you know, I loved God and then loving my brother as well. And there were voices out there that were saying, oh, you one or the other, you know, and, and so I think it's really beautiful that you are able to kind of spread this message and then also spread, you know, prayers and, and things like that so that it becomes well, even more... beyond that, we've discovered that, you know, um, the word homosexual was added to the Bible in 1946 as a gross mistranslation as a documentary coming out about that. And then we like, you know, there's so many other misinterpretations and translations in the Bible and just perspectives that aren't taught you know, Joseph right. and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat or whatever, his coat was actually a Ketanit Pasim, which in the earliest translation that, that they have that would be 86 AD, translates to a virginal princess dress. So like Joseph might have been genderqueer or definitely was genderqueer and could have potentially have been a trans person of color. And these mm -hmm. are just perspectives mm -hmm. that are that, you know, those genderqueer people and trans people of color as well as other LGBTQ people are often left on the side of the road when it comes to uh you know sermons and things like that and so this is a perspective that i think they're doing a disservice to the bible by not teaching or at least mentioning and so we're here to just sort of say there are perspectives on this story that will suit you you know i feel like a lot of people read the bible and they point when you're really supposed to read the bible and look within mm. yeah that's that's really deep plus it's Did funny you... we approach it from a funny way we're a comedy podcast i mean you know, like we have crazy titles of our shows and like we, we do baked Bible stories once a month where we get super stoned and like break down certain stories, like thinking about them in a different way. And, you know, we have uh, goofy guests on like, you know, we're, we're trying to keep like keep it light, but we're asking questions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I was l listening to uh, one of the episodes. It's fantastic. So I, I definitely keep it up. I think it's amazing. Is it going to be um is it going to continue now that you're doing live shows or are you going to still be able to make time for it yeah you know we've been recording two episodes a week uh the whole time so we have a bank of episodes that we can put out and we continue to keep recording and you know um we might we took a little break in between season one and season two because we just started season two in february but like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know maybe we'll you know if we need a break we take a little break and we'll come right back like it's really it's like a labor of love and we love doing it oh that's amazing and uh very smart too. record getting that reserve stocked up for the uh, yeah we have you know i didn't know when everything was going to open up again so we were like let's get it done now while we can and so 
you know, we still we're still trying to do that. Uh, lately, we've been only recording one a week because our episodes have been so epic. But um, you know, there's uh, we'll return to normal soon. Beautiful, very very nice. And um, I, I also just going back to now things are opening up, going back into stand up and everything. At what point in your career did you start pursuing stand up comedy? Because I know that you would want to do Broadway, and um, then acting and stand up comedy came after. I started stand up like dabbling in it in um, uh-huh. like, before Mean Girls, like in the early two thousands. But okay, I didn't really it was difficult for me because i wasn't really out of the closet so i didn't feel like i could be very authentic i was making mm-hmm. up stories as opposed to like looking at the mm-hmm. uh, true things that happened in my life so mm-hmm. that was a little difficult for me so i kind of shelved it for a while as i uh, as i pursued film and, and theater and then um i went to toronto to film a tv show conviction and um they really only used me once every two weeks and i was relocated there so i was just sitting around so I went to Second City for stand-up, Second City Toronto, and wow. like learned in the John Candy Theater, you know, like and did like my thing, and like started doing open mics in Toronto and clubs in Toronto, and then, you know, came home for Christmas break and mined my mom's for a lot of material, <laughs> just like wrote down a bunch of funny stuff that I've been dying to tell people about, and then when I got back to LA, I didn't do clubs for a while because I, like was nervous because i had just had like 20 minutes worth of stuff that i'd been working on for like a year so i -hmm. just did open mics like three a night for like three or four months just like relentless like until i could like until i put together like a set that i was proud of and then um started slowly creeping into some shows and then creeping into paid shows and then then i auditioned for naca which is um the national association of uh, campus activities which books colleges and they booked oh, me yeah. at all these schools before I even had an hour so I brought an opener with me and I did a Q&A at the end and I tried to figure out what to do and before I knew it I was writing on the road and everything that I tried knew that they laughed at I added to the show and I, I everything they laughed at in the q and I added to the show and then before you knew it wow. like I just had like a millennial proof hour <laughs> That's amazing. Because in your in your experience, have college shows been more difficult than, let's say, at a comedy club? Actually, no. College, a lot of times, oh. it's the first time they're seeing a stand-up comic. It's, like, actually quite the opposite. Like, a lot of my uh. stuff that works at colleges, like, I got to work a little harder when I get in the club. Because then the same stuff isn't funny to them, I guess. You know, like, my, my audience really, it's, 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 a, it's a lot different. You know, it goes from, like, if you go to you know see a show there'll be 20 year olds there but there's also 60 year old Italian ladies that are coming to see me so it's like you know like (laughs) it's kind of weird like um you know my audience is like mixed it's like for you know like um like young people and old people and all different kinds of people so um it took a while for me to adjust with what works where I see very cool And, and you know it's really interesting I know you were talking about how you started off just kind of not being your true authentic self, making up stories and things like that, then starting to pull from reality. And I, I know I mentioned it in the intro, but the shit Italians, Italian moms say, where <laughs> you basically take shit that your Italian mom says <laughs> and, and <laughs> put on a wig and, and start acting it out. I remember see, I didn't know that was you. I didn't recognize you, but I had seen that a while ago. And I thought that was hilarious having an Italian mom myself. <laughs> so oh thank you i think it's now a prerequisite if you have an italian mom to at least have heard of it (laughs) like (laughs) it's like part it's part for the course i honestly out of anything i've ever done i'm the most proud of that because i feel like i could watch it and crack up like as if it wasn't me because it's like a prank i pulled it's like a prank video to me like it's not even like comedy it's like i'm pranking my mom you know Uh, it's amazing how how does your mom feel about it she loves it it's a masterpiece she thinks like (laughs) she gets recognized someplace just from her voices like you know some places like it's like she was at the beach and she was screaming to my sister she was like diana get me a towel and people came over and they're like i don't know if i should say this or not but you remind me so much of this character on youtube you should see it and she's like that's my son like you know it's like (laughs) like people often uh you know it really resonates with her like she was at the bank and they just recognized her from her voice like you know she just she's just like um that's she loves it yeah oh that's so that's so good and i i do also have to laud you because i feel like you are really able to 
to be observant about things like shit your mom says, or I heard you on an interview on the news where you were talking about your tour. Yes, that's amazing. Noticing that in Los Angeles, amazing is is used quite frequently, whereas on the East Coast, Brooklyn, it's more phenomenal. So um, (laughs) it's actually unreal how many people use how much people use the word amazing in our culture and how it's not like brought more attention to it. Like it's used for everything. And it's like, does it really cause amazement that they have ketchup, (laughs) you know? Give ketchup, amazing. It's like, no, it's not. And then honestly, I really don't even like compliments with like, you look amazing or like, you sounded amazing. It's like, I don't really believe them anymore. I'm like, what does that just mean? I mean, it's just good. I, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's and like, yeah, if, I feel... I, if I was saying like, do you have ketchup? And they go, yes. And I go, nice. So I'm like, you sounded nice. You looked <laughs> nice. It just doesn't, it doesn't resonate for me. I need now, what... a bigger vocabulary to believe your compliments. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, do you have a word of choice, or you just like to be just versatile? like literally anything, fantastic, incredible. It doesn't matter, like anything but amazing. Like amazing to me, it's like just sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely agree. Even though I am victim, well, not victim, I use amazing as well. But I try and go for the word. Maybe they're a little retired. Bring them out of retirement, like splendid. Um, yeah, ravish, I would love a ravishing. splendid. I love a ravishing. You look ravishing it's it's so funny like i really i feel that energy <laughs> <laughs> that's what i you know because amazing does get kind of dull you, you're right it's like you you uh you're watching the same porn like five times in a row and you're like this doesn't do anything for me anymore so it's like okay that's your example but i like <laughs> i <laughs> i'm still searching for that one porn i saw five years ago that was awesome on tumblr and i can't find it again you know <laughs> oh no <laughs> That one thing that made me nut like 10 years ago. And I'm like, damn, I got to find it. Um, you, that, you know what? There are those, uh, there are those like porn mines where you got to dig for the, that, that secret one. But if it's like, if it's too much, too many amazings, like if you have an amazing 10 years ago and then you've got another one now, that's okay. But like amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, I, yeah. I don't know why I keep saying it. It's, uh, yeah. But it's anyway. Splendid. So, uh, also, so really excited, and the link's going to be in the show notes for your shows here in Phoenix. I also, I saw at CB Live, there's going to be a Mean Girls trivia. Is that going to be? Is are you part yeah. of that? You know, they were they were telling me they were going to do something like that, and they were like, "Do you want to come?" And I was like, "Sure." So I, I'm going to be at the trivia. It's before my show, so then I get a little break, and then I go on. So, oh, okay. get some people jazz, jazzed up, win some prizes. Oh, that's, that's great. How, is it going to be really tough? These questions I did brush up on Mean Girls. There is bit. not, there is not a Mean Girls question that I don't know. I would venture to say that if somebody either asked me something trivial wise, I didn't know, or like, I've never been asked like an original question by press. Like nobody's got like something that I didn't talk about yet. Dang. Like, that movie has been dissected. It's just, there's just nothing left. Oh, yeah. You guys took yes. it all. You took it all. You squeezed blood out of a rock. We got nothing left. Oh, my gosh. We did. We, we did. So I guess that scraps the next 20 minutes of questions for me and girls. No, <laughs> oh, man. Well, I well, actually, not a mean girls question, but I did want to ask, have you been in an, area, an Ariana Grande music video yet? No, no, I have not. Okay. She did. It. She asked me to be in Thank You Next, but um, I was. Uh, it was like the first day of me doing improv clubs. Like it was like my first. Like improv was like we're gonna send you out on tour. Like you can do Orlando and Tampa, and it was literally like the first day of my tours, and I had almost sold out. I couldn't cancel. I was like killing me because they were like, "Oh, we're gonna do it on Sunday," and my show I think was like Tuesday or Wednesday, and then they're like, "Oh, we're moving it to Tuesday," and I was like, I, "That's it. You killed it. Like I can't." Oh no! So, and I just felt so bad, but I I, I would have felt worse if I you know turned down all those fans. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Um, but no, I I was excited when I heard the story about, it. and she even um created a new size for her merch for her T-shirts too. Yes, that just came you. out like today. Yeah, the article. <laughs> like, it's so weird when you talk about stuff and you don't know what they're gonna print. I was just having conversation about like, but yeah. She did do that. She's very sweet. Um, she's a sweetheart. And, you know, uh, 
she gave me like six tickets front row for my nieces, like all like, you know, at Christmas time to come see her in concert in Miami. Oh. And it was their first concert and they got tickets from Ariana Grande to be in the front row. Like, and they were all like eight. It was oh. just like, are you kidding? Like, what a better story. Like, I was like, everyone's always like, well, what's your first concert? And someone's asked her, she's gonna be like, Ariana Grande front row guest of the artist. Like, it's gonna be like, what? You know, like, so I'm epic. I'm jealous. I remember my first concert being the live Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles singing. I don't know. It was like nice. Mine was the <laughs> womb. There it is. Weekend at Metro Zoo. Oh, nice. um, wait, it was at a zoo. Yeah, it was like a benefit after Hurricane Andrew. And it was like the womb. There it is. Weekend. And it had like K7 that's saying, come baby, boom, baby, baby, come, come. And like, whoop, there it is. Like tag team saying, whoop, there it is. They were like the headliners. Wow, that's incredible. And I I just feel bad for the poor animals, especially if they don't like whoop, there it is. They're gonna, they're stuck. They're from Miami, they like whoop, there it is. Oh, okay, they started to wag their tails. Yeah, 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 Miami, all Miami animals. I think the flamingos were all booty dancing. They were getting, it was just happening. All the Miami animals in the zoo, they've got a gold chain. They've got sunglasses. They've got a little tan yes. line. Beautiful. They know what's up. <laughs> That's beautiful. All right. Well, we're going to go into the advice portion of the podcast where we're going to answer some questions and then we'll say Let's goodbye to it. each other. But um, I wanted to start off first with an inspirational quote. I've got one here, but I like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that help just get them through their dark days or motivate them when they're just not feeling it. So Daniel, are you a quote guy? Do you have any that are near yeah, and dear like to quotes. your heart? I think that some of the ones that really affected me were like, what would you do if you knew you wouldn't fail? That's like one that always gets me. And that, you know, I combine that with what would you do if you weren't a performer? And then you should just try whatever that thing is. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, um, so that's something. And then I had a quote that got like a little bit of um, fame on the internet that said, um, it took me 20, it says you either like me or you don't. It took me 20 something years to learn how to love myself. I don't have that kind of time to convince somebody else. So I think it's like very that, like, it's very like, if, you know, I took me a long time to like myself. Like, I don't, if you don't like me, I'm not going to sit here and try to figure out all those years that, you know, of lessons to try to get around liking me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important for a lot of people to, <laughs> learn as well because it does truly feel and and i'm not saying this in a vain way at all but like almost an envious way where i wish i loved myself as much as you love yourself because it feels like you're totally comfortable in your own skin and you're just loving life and it's a beautiful you know, thing to see man. like social media can appear a certain way but i have to be honest i really Fair. do i really do love myself in that way like that it does appear that way because it took me so long to just not give a shit anymore. It's like, I've had guys say to me, like, you know, I take my shirt off at the pool and I'm a big dude. And that's always like, what? Like, you know, and I'm like, yeah. some uh, guys will get in my DMs and they'll be like, one guy wrote me, he was like, young man. He was like, I hope to one day have the courage you have. I'm 66 and I still can't take my shirt off. I was like, what are you waiting for? 77? Like, you wasted your whole life. Like not letting your belly see the sun. It's kind of like, for what reason? He was like, I don't know. People might laugh. I was like, well, they weren't going to fuck you anyway. So, like, stick your titties in their face. Like, who gives a shit? You know? And normalize different bodies by just going out there and being yourself and not giving a fuck. And, like, I really have inspired a lot of guys to do that. Like, these two guys wrote me and they were like, you know, we're a couple, we're monogamous, and we go away every holiday and we never take our shirt off. So here's a picture of us with our shirts off at the beach when we went on vacation this year. And we loved it. And we couldn't Aww. understand why all these years we haven't felt comfortable doing that. We're with each other. We're not even with anyone else. Who cares? And so this whole who cares mentality is really changing a lot of people because when you start to realize that, like, I'm not going to let anybody else talk shit about me. I'm going to be, I'm the shit. I think I'm awesome. People go, oh, I can't really fuck with Danny. That joke's not going to land if I make a joke about him because he's so confident. So then they don't even bother. And then they treat me nice. They'd rather make a compliment towards me. And the way they treat me actually gives me confidence. It's like, you have to fake it till you make it. You have to like give yourself compliments about things you don't like about yourself. You have to like support things about yourself you don't like, uh, accentuate them. Because literally, and I swear to God, this is the honest, like to God truth. Every single thing, Stephen, that I've ever been made fun of in my life is a reason I fucking cash a check. 
And so it's like, if you could just take your pain points and turn it into a paid point, then nobody can mess with you. Yeah, call me fat. Go ahead. I'll cash the check. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't care. Like, whatever you say, like, it's okay. Like, fine. I don't struggle with it anymore because yeah, it's like, I could yeah. just live my life. And, you know, I, I, and I, I never understood, like, I've always never had a problem dating anyone. I've always been able to be charismatic and like find the right kind of guy. I usually mm-hmm. don't date guys that are chubby chasers or whatever. I date guys that are like, I like you and I like everything about you. And I've never been with a guy like you before because I'm the nice. only me. I really am the only me. So it's like, if you're the only you and you present that, then you'll attract everything you want in the world. And I think it's really just about, you know, um, being authentic, I said. And as somebody who spent most of their life being inauthentic, I'm just too tired. I'm just too tired to put on a show for anybody else. If it means I don't act, if it means I don't, people don't like me or whatever, like, fuck everyone. Like, I'd rather just be me and be comfortable and have my family and friends love me. Like, I don't even care. And I really think it just, like, frees so many people up when they realize that they can do that. You know, you have to realize, too, where all of this construct comes from like it comes from like the media telling us what we like and what we should look like and what we think is sexy and what other people think are sexy they don't Mm. know they just went for Mm. physically fit because it's like the easiest obvious choice like there's so many different things about people that are attractive and cute and whatever you know what i mean like every time you read a script and it's got a girl in it it's always like she's bubbly pretty but she doesn't know it it's like shut up and then they just like cast a you know what i mean like they just cast a gorgeous girl like I'm just like, it's like, th- that's just the same construct that keeps going over and over again. We have to like diffuse that in reality because there's so many different types of people. Think about all the types of people that you've been attracted to and how mm-hmm. like you talk to somebody and they've become more attractive or you met a beautiful girl and then you thought she was a bitch and then you realize how ugly she was inside and she's not pretty anymore. Like yeah. that's the same thing. Yeah. It's just lead with love. Lead as a good, kind person. Be funny. Have a good time. If you're not funny, laugh a lot. That's my advice for you. Like, if you're a fan of comedy and you're listening to this and you can't make a good joke, just laugh all the time and the comedians will keep you around. You know, <laughs> like, it's just like, that's what I say. I tell everybody I date. I'm like, don't be intimidated that I'm a comedian. Just laugh a lot. I'm fine. That's hitting home quite a bit. That's why I'm <laughs> full, full of laughter. <laughs> oh, well, those are a, a, a slew of them. Um, amazing quotes so i'm i feel i feel inspired now but i've got a quote and i'll share it too you can tell me how it speaks to you but it's not by any person whatsoever it's by a robot and its name is inspirobot and so what it does is it takes ai to take the wisest words known to man or woo man and mash them together okay based off of that explanation how good do you think this quote is going to be amazing Amazing. Also, going back to your first quote about um, if you were not a professional entertainer, what would right. you be? What What would you do? Uh, you, you know, thought- at first, I, I said to somebody, I, I'd probably be a photographer, and they were like, "Well, why don't you just take pictures?" I was like, "Oh yeah," and now <laughs> and now I've published photos in magazines and places. Like you know, it's like you can just do whatever the fuck you want. Now I'm a podcaster. Now, whatever. Maybe I'll write a book next week. I don't know. I just keep trying things because like, why can't we, we have, you have to be a multi-hyphenate in this day and age. Yes. I, I, I agree so much with that. And it's, you're, you're just like this ball of talent because it doesn't, everything you touch, it's like a Midas touch of, uh, of talent. Mm-hmm. Cause you're just spraying it everywhere. That's amazing. Well, maybe you should try being a movie studio executive. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's great. All right. Well, this quote from Inspirebot is, ask not what, but will you marry me? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Inspirebot getting a little handsy here. Whoa, calm down, Inspirebot. <laughs> this, yeah. <laughs> this, this is just a guest. Calm down. Um, all right. Well, I, I do feel like we're kind of inspired here. So we'll go on and answer these questions. So this first question, they're all from the Reddit advice column. So people have written these in Reddit. First one is, I am tired of salespeople knocking on my door. Please help. I have salespeople knocking on my door almost every day and the knocking scares my dog. I am busy working at home and don't like to be disturbed during important meetings. I'm thinking of hanging a sign on the door that says salespeople not welcome here, but I don't want to be an asshole please help me. Any ideas? Yes. Put a sign that says, uh, deliver salespeople. 
And then when you lift the sign, say very sick, contagious person inside, please don't ring the bell. Oh man. That's that way your so friends good. and everybody else won't open it. That's really good. I like that. Yeah. That's what, oh man. And it's not even mean. That's no, the, my, the best one is my friend kept losing his cell phone all yeah. the time. Like he lost his cell phone. Uh, I want to put this in my act because it's just too good. I haven't written it right yet, but it's, this is the real story. So like we, uh, I was in Europe and he was supposed to meet me in um, Scotland and he was in Germany and he lost his phone. 10 days uh-huh. couldn't get in touch with him. Then we go to P town. Uh, we're a P town. Like, and he's supposed to like help me promote my show there. And he's gone for three days, lost his phone. Like he keeps losing his phone. And I, I finally got his phone. We got a label maker and we put special needs and then his phone number on it. <laughs> and then a little picture of a wheelchair. <laughs> and now it gets returned to every time. <laughs> and he's gotten it back five times since. And the fifth time he came back with a spider web of cracks on the screen. And he was like, you know what? You can make it theft proof, but you can't make it me proof. <laughs> oh my God. My favorite part is how you guys were just like, well, he's never going to keep it with him. So it's going to escape. I was like, you're low key special needs. Like you need help with this phone. (laughs) And there's nothing. It's like you said, there's nothing mean about it. We're not like dissing a special needs person. We're just making a thief not steal. We're not taking a spot or something from a special needs person. We're just saying like, and my friend kind of is special needs in a way. Yes, he need, he needs that phone because it's gonna rack up his phone bill if he keeps having to buy yes. different ones. Yes. Oh, well, that's wonderful. I, I love that. I might put that on my phone because I yeah, do it. it quite a bit too. All if right. If you really well, need, if you need an extra step, put on a pink case because most people return it when they think it's a special needs girl. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, incredible. I'll test that out. I'll, I'll do an A-B test and I'll, I'll lose a blue phone and a, a pink phone and we'll see. What no you need. Do. I already won. Be already won. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've got the last question. It's from Reddit. It says, um, grandma about to see my computer history. Hey, y'all just moved out of a temporary stay from my grandma's house, forgot to wipe the personal computer. Now she's going to access all of my history. And I know that nosy old fart will scroll through everything I was doing and probably tell everyone she knows if she finds something interesting enough to share. Trust me, she found a vibrator of the previous guest and showed me. I moved across the entire country, so I can't make a quick visit. What are some excuses I can come up with to stall and make her or make her forget? Whew. Um, what you can do is give her a link that goes nowhere and then say, oh, I'm sorry, grandma, did you open that link? It makes all porn go in your browser history. Oh, man. Daniel, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like you need an advice podcast because this is uh, <laughs> so wise. Yeah, thank you. And it took me a second. I could solve almost any problem. What else you got? That's incredible. I mean, those that, those are the two questions. I thought we were going to marinate on those for a while, but Daniel Francais, he's got the uh, the wisdom right up to the brim. That's it. Jesus. All right. Well, beautiful. Daniel, thank you so much for joining the podcast and, and um, gracing me with your presence and, uh, and talking a little bit about yourself and giving advice. Um, wanted to ask, what have you got going on? What would you like to plug? And uh, where can people follow you? Well, we'll see you live in Phoenix, you know, so let's not forget that Woo-woo. on the 20th. So we'll see people there, but you can follow me anywhere online at what's up Danny on Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, blackpeoplemeet.com, JJ, Christian Mingle, farmers only and Venmo. I love that. I'll have, I'll have the links to all of that in the show notes. Thank so guys, you, you can I, just I, click. I appreciate it. Especially, click. especially Christian Mingle and Venmo. I appreciate that. Okay. I'm, I have a big audience from the farmers only niche. So oh, okay. you might. Yeah, you might get a lot of hey, y'alls. So uh, amazing. That'll all be in the show notes. Thank you again. And audience, thank you guys for listening and watching. You guys are just gems. You are indeed amazing. You live up to the word. So congratulations. My, <laughs> my little cherubs. Well, thank you so much. And we'll talk at you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>